Hello friends, Lady Lazarus. And now we have got the third section of this poem. And then what happens is that what in the in the peanut cleansing crowd and the big striptease, what what is uh, the persona of the poem to the public? That's what the poet has described. To the public, how does the public view her? That is also a kind of computer game. As Baudelaire wrote, the girl who did not take place, we can say, the peanut cringing crowd and all that uh, striptease did not take place. It's a kind of mental process, a computer game. Now here, what we find is here, in this, the Holocaust and after, what we find is, what is she to the Nazis? What is she to a Nazi who is a sole enemy of the Jew? So that's what we see in these legs. So here what we find is, a sort of walking miracle. Who? Myself. The person of the point. A walking miracle. Why? Because my skin bright as a Nazi lampshade. So the transformation will take place after my death. After my, I am a victim. The victim, whose victim? The Nazi's victim. So once I become a victim and they in cold blood murder me, kill me, massacre all of us, what will happen? I represent the Jews, the victims of the fascist Nazi, uh, that is our skins will become or my skin will become bright as a Nazi lampshade. See, bright as a Nazi, Nazi lampshade, irony, soft in irony. A Nazi lampshade, it will be used for a lampshade, but it is bright for them. Then my right foot, a paperweight, the commoditization continues. The other side we saw, the peanut crunching crowd, and then you find some parallelism between the gentleman Lassar and also Saint and their relics. Here it is totally different. Here it is for taking revenge, so to say. Is there a revenge taken upon a race by the fascist, fascist Nazis who are the sole enemy of the Jews? And so here it is, bright as an asimut. That bright, it touches your heart. So it doesn't mean bright, just the opposite of it. And then my right foot, a paper bead. My face, a featureless, fine Jew linen. My featureless, fine Jew linen. The skin will be taken out, peeled off. Then my face will become featureless, no shape, nothing. Just imagine your skin is taken away, then how will you look? How, what will be the, your appearance? And continues, peel off my napkin. Say, my skin, oh my enemy, do I terrify? So when you do this, in the process, will you be terrified when you look at me? Will you, will you be afraid when you look at me? Afraid will be a very mild word. So, will you, will you be terrified by my looks? Of course, that looks, behind that, the order of that looks, that's yours, yourself. But still, what do you be terrified? That's what she's asking. So, that will tell you this bright, as bright as an Nazi lampshade. That's the opposite of what she means there. And then the nose, the eye pits, the full set of teeth, the sour breath will vanish in a day. Sour breath. Sour breath means the 
the breath of a dead body, the smell of a dead body, that will vanish in a day. You can see, when you look at my full set of teeth, imagine you have now cheeks disappear, and then the cheek, then only the teeth. That's what I say, do I terrify you? My nose is a pig here. Once you take it out, you must have seen skull, you know. You look like a skull. My face featureless and you look like a skull. Do I terrify? Soon, soon the flesh, the grave came, it will be. So here there is a, is a passive is used. The, the flesh will be eaten by the grave king. The flesh will be eaten by the grave king. And a grave has double meaning here. Grave. One is grave. The cave. Grave has the. It's a cave. Grave is a cave. The other is serious. Grave man. Grave. Means the grave is meant for a serious purpose. That is not for a. It's not a joke. Burying somebody is not a joke. Or. It cannot be taken light hearted. It's burying and then uh, um, taking, see, that, that is taking away the flesh and all those things. Soon, soon the flesh, the grave, it will be at home on me. So the grave will have an at home on me. At home, a party, so to say. The grave will eat me up. And the grave also could mean a serious thing. A place, a serious place. Understand? So then you are hidden. So this is what happened, the whole thing. What happens to this, the dead body of a Jew? But she is not a dead body. And there is no Jew to do all these things. That's what we say, it is a mental process. And it's a computer game. In computer game, nothing happens. But you can see everything. So the same thing here also. Then, ash, ash. You poke and stir. Flesh, bone, there's nothing there. Where will you poke and stir? I turn and burn. So after burning me, you poke. You try to find out, uh, search for it. But you will find nothing. And finally what has happened to me? It has become, my fat has been collected. And they have made soap with that. A cake of soap. A wedding ring. That cannot be melted. So it may be still there. The heat is not sufficient enough to melt the wedding ring, the gold. The gold ring is difficult. To, maybe it was not enough. And the gold feeling of my teeth. Just said that, you know, the Nazis used to open the mouths of the dead uh, Jews. And the Jews were very rich people. If there is any so some feeling required, they used to do it with the gold. So that was, the Nazis used to collect this gold from the dead bodies of the Jews. So that is reference to that. So the whole section, you can see the Nazi section, for the fascist, on the Holocaust and imagery. That's because just so deep in her mind. The poem was written in 1962. She herself was not a victim. She did not undergo any such thing, but she imagines it's a mental process. So what happens here is that there is, in this section there is no parallelism. You can't find any parallelism between sainthood or gentleman lust. This is exclusively the Holocaust section. The section. Holocaust sections, the importance of the Holocaust section is focus on the hatred, hostility, and the enmity of the fascist Nazi towards the symbol, the innocent Jews, isn't it? They said, no, I mean, my right foot Nazi lampshade, my face a Jew linen. Yes, yes. So that is what she says. So this section is for that. Some people have said that, some critics have argued that this was not required. But in the scheme of the poem, this is absolutely necessary. Because after all, what is she trying to say? It is a historical event. It is not anything imagined. That historical event has come here. Because she considers herself as a victim. A victim of, victim in front of the peanut crunching crowd. 
victim of the Nazis. Now, you declare yourself as a victim. You tell to the world that I am a victim. I am going to die. I will die. I sacrifice my life. What is the end result of all this? The end game, so to say, is nothing but the re attaining immortality. So that you get an idea of the historical events of those days, that is around the Second World War, World War II. And then you also find the, the hatred, how she has pictured or how she has brought, uh, given us a vivid description of the real historical events that took place in connection with or in and around the Second World War situation. The hatred of the uh, the victimization source of the Nazis, uh, victimization of the Jews by the Nazis. But finally, all the threat together. First one, you remember playing with suicide. Second, the peanut crunching crowd. And third, now you have got a victim in the hands of the a Holocaust victim in the hands of the fascist Nazi who were sown, who are sown enemies of the Jews. For what is the historical reason for that, we do not. So you get a vivid description of that. This, is, this can be applied to, not only to this particular persona, but all the Jews. So the end product of the Jews, you get so, you get wedding ring, you get the world feeling. World feeling. So what happens here is it is worse than commodification. It is in fact, not selling anything but the stealing, we can say, a robbing, uh, robbing a dead body. Where's, is there anything worse than that in this world? Robbing a, a, a dead body, see, taking away whatever is left. So, it is utter disrespect shown to the dead bodies of the Jews those days. That is, that is in and around the events of the Second World War. So you get a vivid description of that. Again, when you come into that now, all these threats, all these events are geared to one thing, that is to project that project the person of the poem as a victim, a helpless victim, a victim of the situations which he did not create, or he did not create. It was Fate, because of fate, nobody can help. So the utter helplessness of a victim in the hands of the public, the hands of the uh, Farsi Nazis, in the hands of, we can say, people as such, and in the hands of the situation. Now we have the denouement that we will see in the next class. I hope that we are uh, keeping these points in your mind. Playing with suicide, death, playing with death. That is the most attractive thing, so to say, negatively, we can say, is to play with death. You can see even now, newspapers, headlines, you will find so and so tried to commit suicide. Then all the police force come, probably come to save that. Suppose you are a gentleman walking along the street, now do you mind you? See, that way you should understand. It's a negative publicity. Then you find the peanut counting. That is again a process, mental process, a computer game like the same thing here also. Now when you come to the last uh, part of the denouma, so you know, the, the, the last part of the resolution, or we say denouma, uh, of the fabula. Now, we are discussing the fabula of the poem. That is the story of the poem. That is the events of the poem. Now, how the whole thing has been constructed to defamiliarize, that is our topic that we have to discuss in the coming lectures. I tell them why. Hope that you are following me, you are with me, or you are against me. I don't know. Why? Have a nice day.